Yo, what's up? Do rag discussions with Winston Mayo, the regular Christian guy. We are talking about Benny Hinn's confession or renouncing the prosperity gospel. And how do y'all think, I guess, famous people should repent? No sponsor in this video. So this video has been brought to you by Winston Mayo, The Blessing Report, Searching for Land on All Book Buying um, Places, and um, The Mayo, <laughs> Science of Salvation, The Mayo for Manufacturing and Manipulating Faith. But we need to talk about Christians being jerks to Benny Hinn. Mm -mm -mm. Now, y'all know me. I don't be preaching self. I don't preach the prosperity gospel at all, right? And I think that, all right, so if y'all don't know, Benny Hinn is a really big um, televangelist. That's the word I'm looking for. And uh, he preaches the gospel. Um, y'all should really check out his interview with David Diga Hernandez with Spirit Church out in San Diego, California. That is the most thorough, um, I guess, understanding of the situation. So for a long time, right, um, legitimately, um, Benny Hinn has been on this like false prophet list, right? And I, I don't know nothing. <laughs> I don't know nothing. All I know is that as long as I've been in the Christian faith, people give him a hard time, right? And that's one thing I've always thought about, um, basically like keeping my mouth shut on things that don't pertain to me. And um, a lot of people legitimately have built their ministries off of calling people out and like, I know, and y'all know too, um, other people that really don't be teaching or preaching the gospel or whatever. And the problem with it is that it gives no room for repentance. Like I even thought, I was like, man, these people out here selling the gospel, pimping the gospel or whatever. But when it comes to uh, theology and Philippians one, bro, there's a whole chapter on, hey, if people out here um, being false prophets or whatever, whatever, they're still furthering the gospel. And so it's like this notion that the sovereignty of God will even everything out. I'm not calling Benny Hinn a false prophet, but I'm just saying for you to build a ministry off of, um, I don't know, calling people out or hating people or whatever, I don't think it works in your best interest. And so, when I'm saying this video, I mean like, Christians are jerks. Bruh, people are jerks to this man, Benny Hinn. Cause like, we are always like, calling people outright, like repent, like repent, repent. This man repented! He did exactly what y'all wanted him to do. He renounced um, the prosperity gospel. And for some reason that's not a win for Christians right and instead of being like oh, okay cool um, he repented they are attacking him and calling it disingenuine it's like yo if he's like publicly saying this ain't it anymore what else can he has to do to convince y'all or whatever but um, another thing about it is that I think we don't think about our personal walk. It says to those, um, as you forgive, you shall also be forgiven, right? And so if you are being really harsh with somebody and being like, uh, his forgiveness is it's like disingenuine or you're just yelling at this man, how, how can you be forgiven by God? It's like, as you do not forgive other people, you will not be forgiven. So, I think it's so weird that Christians are so mean to this man. There is a long list of people that you're claiming to be prosperity gospel people or false prophets, and you want them to give the real gospel. This man repented, 
and it's like I don't know what's happening in his heart but also you don't know what's happening in his heart you can only go off of words and actions right um, and so I think it's pretty hard for people to be like and that's another thing right there are other people who did not do a public display of repentance and Christians are calling for that. It's like, no, if you're preaching falsely, if you're um, not giving the gospel correctly, you and you have a platform, basically. Um, you need to repent publicly because you're giving this false gospel, this false narrative publicly. So you need to repent publicly. All right. So he did that. Right. And so I think we need to think about our own lives. We never have to repent publicly like you repent at most um to another person that you offended or whatever but i think when it comes to, like change of hearts or change of minds or whatever you don't give people the same freedom that you have right if i'm doing something bad i get to go in my prayer closet in my room confess to god and repent there right and we aren't giving people like like it's basically what i'm trying to say is hard right repentance is hard Ch changing your own mind is pretty hard admitting when you're wrong is pretty hard so to have it on such a high scale but to like so that's what i'm saying like he humbled himself like anybody that can be like hey i was wrong that that takes a big that takes a big person to do that and so we hear about being a sore winner or i mean a sore loser but you also have to be a sore not a good if you have to be a good loser you have to be a good winner also and so if you're being a sore loser is bad being a sore winner is bad and so i'm not saying oh christians won because he repented or, or whatever but if i'm in sin and then i repent and then all these people give me a whole bunch of flack about how I'm repenting. Guess what? I'm not repenting no more. All my stuff, like, <laughs> or I might revert. I might go even harder or even worse. So um, I think Christians, it's like, man, y'all are like some real jerks right now. Um, or there's this Christian rapper named is John Gibbs and Jay Givens. Jay Givens is his name, John Gibbs is his cousin. Um, Jay Givens, he came out as like gay or whoever. Uh, you know, we don't support that lifestyle. But after that, he uh, came out having AIDS or HIV or whoever. And with that, people were like, yo, that's what you get. Do you know how disgusting that is to say to somebody like, Sin is sin. It's whatever. Like you, a lot of things, you could be cheating on your wife and be straight, and then um, I don't know. You get cancer. Are you going to be like that's what you get for cheating on? Your... I was like, man, Christians, y'all are jerks, jerks. <laughs> to Betty Hans' uh, confession, and I'm just like, man, this is not the love of God to show grace and mercy. But most of all, right, the Bible. And Jesus Christ is literally a gospel of repentance so he's doing that but furthermore he is uh, the gospel the gospel of Jesus Christ is about resurrection and restoration and if y'all know like in the context of what resurrection is like giving life to dead things right so for something to be fixed or to be restored they have to be broken and so it's like sin has broken all of us it has destroyed everything so why when we have someone repenting we have someone confessing renouncing sin we're attacking them just as harshly so it's really just like those um salem witch trials it's just like nah y'all really don't want um conversion or repentance y'all just want to fight and so i think it's real like disgusting the way christians are treating people in the body of christ and so it's like you need to know if you're being effective or not and that's another big thing i definitely want to talk about um definitely watch um david diga hernandez video 
when he's interviewing Benny Hinn because Benny Hinn confessed on Monday or whatever. So the thing went viral um, on social media and he was on his Facebook Live renouncing the prosperity gospel. And the most important thing is what he said in his interview off of the Facebook Live. He said that the reason that he renounced this or whatever is a change from the Holy Spirit. Saying that all you people calling him out, saying open rebuke is better than secret love or whatever the Bible verses is, um, you did nothing. And he says this in the video, you literally did nothing. And so we ourselves, we encounter that a lot of times. The Holy Spirit convicts and the Holy Spirit changes mind. That's what repentance is, a change of heart and a change of mind. But we don't have to do it on the same scale. And so we don't have a bunch of people in comments or publicly yelling at us um, to repent or whatever. Uh, because we don't think we're doing anything wrong. Uh, and then when we do, because of the leading of the Holy Spirit changing our heart, we align ourselves. So he says in the um, interview that this change has been happening for two years, right? And what has come of it, like who actually helped him to change was his nephew, right? Somebody in close proximity, not social media Christians, not um, social justice warriors, not comment Christians or whoever. Um, real people in your real life help to change like minds and help to change like perspectives, right? And also people who were evidence of his ministry. So he has some books out and um, he had like young leaders and young Christians be like, hey, because of you, I have come to Christ, right? And so they're part of like whatever program or ministry he's a part of. And they would ask him, it's like, hey, um, I believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, but I'm having trouble with this prosperity message. Um, can you explain this? And he said the frequency of people um, that loved him and were in close proximity with him um, made him open to change, right? Um, but this wasn't the precept. The precept was the Lord and the Holy Spirit changing his heart. We, when we repent, have change of hearts all the time. But we have the luxury of doing this in the privacy of our own home, bedroom, our own church, or however. But because um, I think the book of James says that teachers of the gospel will be held at a higher standard or whatever. Y'all are putting a burden on men and women of God. That's really unfair. It is, it is so unfair that you had the luxury to change your mind in your home, in your privacy. And you might, man, you might change your mind. And you may not even um, apologize to the people you did wrong, right? And so it's like, man, y'all, y'all got all the leniency, grace, and mercy for yourselves, but it seems like there's just a lack. And <laughs> uh, a scarcity, that is the word I'm looking for. A scarcity when it comes to grace and mercy and forgiveness. Because he did what y'all wanted. <laughs> and the biggest thing is like, y'all did not win. None of your tactics were effective, right? And so, if the Holy Spirit is the one doing the work, if these people in his life are doing the discipleship, then you shouldn't um, claim, I don't know, any reward in that. But, your I, th I think that's pride. That just literally sounds like pride to me in the face of repentance you're like ha 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 we got you it is so rude it is so rude to be jerks on that level or whatever and so the bible says the world uh, will basically know we will know our fruit or whatever by the way we love one another this man 
is in the faith. And so I think the one thing about calling a, a person a false prophet, you don't give room for growth at all, right? Like even me, um, I have some videos, I stand by all my videos. I may not stand by all of my methods or even my language, but theologically wise, it's, it's okay. Like I'm not taking my videos down. But if you're like, hey Winston, you can keep the video up, but if you would like to cut out a portion of any of your videos, would you do that? Would you edit them? I would be like, yes, because I have grown, right? <laughs> I'm a different person. And so when you're calling out a person as a false prophet, you give no room to repentance, no room to a change of mind, and you're attacking people. And it's like, yo, I, <laughs> I have a list I know people I do not believe are teaching correctly and so are they a false prophet are they not eh, I don't know is it heresy is it heresy or blasphemy eh, I don't know but the Bible teaches us is that let the wheats and the tares grow together because you may pluck up some wheat believing that it's weeds and tares and you may keep some tares that you believe are we so it's like yo you don't know like legitimately you don't know the end proposition of anybody right and so you don't know um, people's growth to become more christian or you don't know people's falling away from the faith to be less christian all right and so it's like man how arrogant and prideful of us um, to do that and even I heard a really good quote the other day. I was like yo, that's some fire It was like if the Lord doesn't judge a man until the end of his life Who are we to judge people? Uh, before God, right? And I was like yo, do you know how like deep that is? And it's like it's true God judges the day of judgment is at the end of our lives and for us to judge anybody before that time like the lord could get any of us to repent or any of us could fall away if we're being like really 100 and we're being really honest any of us can fall away uh, from the faith um it's, it's not a really good message <laughs> but i've only been in the faith for seven years benny hadn't been in the faith like longer than me or whatever so even in his like old age or whatever I don't, I don't think it's old old but it's like man having a heart of repentance and all that is real um it's humble but it's real admirable to be like yo this is a really hard thing to do publicly because of the associations that he has he even talks about it in his interview it's like man i'm gonna make a lot of people upset because of their ministries and this like he just admits like this is a hard thing it's not like an easy thing even when we repent it's not an easy thing so i'm just like man y'all need to be more gracious more kind more patient more loving it's like he he did it <laughs> like I, I don't know body of christ um what do y'all think about um, Christians attitudes towards repentance uh, what do you think about um, the prosperity gospel because like wh how, if you have discernment you you know like or if you live legitimately just read your Bible you know what is like true biblical Christianity and versus like cultural Christianity and like false teaching so you can teach incorrectly but it doesn't make you a false prophet right but you have legitimately false prophets and so that level of discernment and grace and mercy towards people um to have room for error but most of all room for repentance that's the craziest thing it's like man why would i ever want to confess anything if this is how i'm being met i would i would never admit i'm wrong if i knew people were just gonna rub it in right and so that's my video um, Christians stop being jerks <laughs> to other Christians for repenting not that he is in sin and being like ha 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 this is my sin but hey I did something wrong I'm changing my mind um, I'm changing my ministry oh you're such a bad person this is disingenuous you're lying 
look at you, look at you, false prophet. It's like, oh, I'm never repenting ever again. But um, comment below um, your thoughts on um, prosperity gospel. Um, comment below on um, <sighs> repentance or Benny Hinn or whoever. Or, yeah, I think the big thing is just repentance. It's like, man, like, <sighs> or whatever. But y'all know, um, thank you for watching. Regular teaching videos are going to be on Wednesdays or Thursdays. These videos are more spontaneous and intermittent. Um, so it's like, eh, whatever. And um, remember to love God, love people, forgive them, have grace and mercy. Um, serve God, serve people. And remember that God uses people, blesses people by using people to bless people. So how have you been a blessing to someone else? today off of social media thanks for watching forgive people let them repent and grow